All right. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this one hour live training that my heart just decided the day I put it out there that it wanted to put together. Um, some of you who are on here know that, I think it was in October, I put together a five day, I called it the Feel to Heal Emotional Revolution. And the purpose of it was to bring a conversation and a connection to the importance of our feelings and emotions. And this is the work that has truly and profoundly and powerfully changed my life from a woman who lived inside of being an achiever, who um, I just was burnt out. I was in this state of constant burnout and it was diagnosed, of course, these things get diagnosed. It was diagnosed as adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue. And my way of dealing with that was just to keep achieving, keep doing stuff. If I just keep doing stuff, it'll all sort itself out. And honestly, that comes down to, for me and at least, it came down to the pursuit of trying to fix adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well. How we get really trapped in the doing, 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 even when we think we're doing it for the right reasons. So I'll chat more on that as we start to progress. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please pop them up. Um, I will, I really want this to be as interactive as possible. I have got a few slides, not loads, just a few, because there's a few key things that I do want to share with you. Um, but if you do have any questions, you can either pop them in the chat and I'll keep an eye on them. Or if you can pop them in, there is a chat box if you look down the bottom. So a quick bit of housekeeping before I dive into sharing my screen. Um, there's the Q&A box. So make sure that that is um, set to all panelists and all attendees so everyone can see it. And then just to the right of that, there's a chat, um, a Q, sorry, to the left is a Q and A box. If you have any questions as I, as we go, pop them in there. Um, while I'm sharing my screen, I can't see the chat or the questions. So once I stop sharing my screen, I will come back to them. Okay. All right. I think that's all the housekeeping before I dive in, um, and get started with this for you. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. There we go, so that is working. I'm just gonna make that fill the whole screen. Just give me a second, just make sure it's doing that. There we go, oops. Let me just go back. All right. So today is a one hour live training, which is really focused on the importance of how we need to be able to feel to heal. Why is this a big deal? Well, I'm going to get into that a little as we progress. But as human beings, we have been given this incredible gift of, the, of, of free will and, and free choice, which is brilliant, but it can be a blessing and a curse. So I actually believe that our feelings and emotions are, have been given to us not by accident. They've been given to us as a tool for self-healing. But unfortunately, over time, through the history of humanity, having free will has also given us the ability to decide how we handle and manage our emotions and feelings. The other thing 
that our free will has given us is also the ability to put our emotions and feelings into boxes, right? So we have, all of us will have a set of emotions and feelings that we have decided are good and we will have a set of emotions and feelings that we have decided are not good. Now, a lot of this will have come from your parents. And let me just, I, I, let me drop a pin in this. Nothing that I say today is a judgment on our parents, on you, on me, on the world, on anything. It is, my, it is just my observation, right? It is my observation. And look, there are studies, psychology reports, all sorts of things that will back up a lot of what I say. However, today is about my observation and how I have come through this process to heal all of my unseen, unfelt, unacknowledged emotions. And the way I've done this is through this practice of feeling into them. Okay. It's super simple, but it's not super easy. All right. So let me click on to the first slide. So here's what you will receive today. What I want to talk about is three things. I want to break today into three components and I'm just going to uh, keep an eye on the time. So the first component I want to talk about is, you know, what do our emotions have to do with healing? What are they? Why do we have them? And what is the, the purpose of them? The second thing I really want to dive into with you is how to harness the power of your emotions and feelings. Yes, there is a power in our emotions and feelings. And it is a, it is a self healing power that requires nothing other than you and your stillness and your presence. Sounds simple. Being human <laughs> makes it unsimple. I love being human, but man, <laughs> if we don't have our humanness in check, it absolutely does run the show. And I'm going to talk about that today too. And then the last thing I want to talk about um, is not talking. We're going to do a short guided practice and I'm going to take you and you, you'll be able to take this away and use it yourself. But this is the practice that I use when I feel something coming up inside of my body, when I feel a feeling or an emotion. And if you've got a heart beating in your chest, you're probably going to start to notice that these feelings and emotions are happening microsecond to microsecond to microsecond. The issue is that we have become so numb and unattuned to, to these feelings and emotions that we're, we're largely not even aware of them. But the more you begin to dive into this work, the more you'll be able to become fully aware that there are sensations happening in your body moment to moment. And the practice of using them as a self-healing mechanism is to be able to just be with them moment to moment. Notice what comes, notice what's here right now, notice what's real right now, be with it and allow it to release. But mostly what we're doing is we are not doing that and we're trapping and suppressing our feelings and emotions down in this little trap door that a subconscious pattern that we all have, that's for, that is another training and I'm, I'm happy to do another training on subconscious patterns, but um, that's a whole training unto itself. So I will be talking about subconscious patterns today. The work I've done has revealed to me that there are eight very distinct subconscious patterns um, and we all have one. Some of us have more than one. Okay. And these subconscious patterns are the gatekeeper to our feelings and emotions. And I'll touch on that a little more later as well. So that's what we are in for today. Now, I just wanted to quickly read some of the points too that, um, that were 
uh, on my post to let you know that inside of everything I talk about today, we'll, we'll cover all of this. So I'm going to share um, why doing this one thing that I'm going to share with you today that nobody ever told me to do, not my parents. In fact, my parents told me to do the opposite. Uh, finally made the difference in me being able to process my emotions. I'm going to share uh, how I learned to shake it off and how I learned that. And it's a beautiful tool that nature has that we can really embody. I'm going to talk uh, about where unhealed emotions come from. That's the subconscious patterning, right? I'm going to talk briefly on that. Um, and I'm going to talk about what happens when you're able to be aware of that. Okay. That is where that's the gateway to being able to process your emotions and feelings. I'm going to chat about why trying to fix our emotions is our subconscious pattern masquerading in a bright red heart costume. Okay. <laughs> More on that. Um, and I'm going to share the, about the process of overthinking and how for me, um, and I wanted to share this because I was living inside my head, stuck in my head and my achiever pattern of overthinking for over a decade that I'm aware of, right? That I'm conscious of. And I now understand that that in itself is a sneaky ploy of my subconscious pattern, my achiever pattern that um, literally was preventing me from ever feeling or healing or processing any of my emotions. Um, and of course, I'm going to take you through the practice at the end. So let us, I've got my microphone plugged in, so I keep reaching for my mouse, but I'm mouseless today. <coughs> oh my God. I don't know if any of you guys are like me, but I'm a mouse girl. I'm not a bit of a click. I'm not the, the fingery kind of <laughs> girl. I'm a mouse girl. All right, let's move on. All right, so I want to run through the, these four steps with you. The, this is what I call the process of being human. No judgment here. This is just what we do. So as we go about our day, we have experiences, right? So something happens. You experience something. Now, that might be something really positive or negative. It might be a challenge. It might be something uncomfortable, but essentially that's the first step, if you like, in this process of being human. We experience something, something happens. What happens next is we tell ourselves a story about that experience. So for example, um, if you've applied for a job, right? You've applied for some job and it's, the, it's your dream job. And the experience is I've applied for the job. Then what happens is you get the phone call that says, sorry, you didn't get the job. So there's a new experience. You've experienced something. Now, not getting the job is going to bring up something. And you're going to tell yourself a story about that. So that will be step two. Something happens, you experience something, and then you tell yourself a story about it. Now, the story will likely be something like, in this instance, in this example, well, I didn't want the job anyway. Uh, it was going to be too far to travel. Or it could be, um, what, am I get, what am I going to do now? I really needed that job. But you're going to tell yourself a story about the job right? About, about the experience, in this case, the job. Then as you tell yourself the story of what you believe about the experience, all the emotions start to come up, right? Now, let's just say, for example, you got the job. All the emotions that come up are going to be emotions of, you know, yay, this is great, right? That's all good. If you didn't get the job, then what are those emotions that are going to be coming up? Disappointment, regret, frustration, anxiety, maybe jealousy around who did get the job, or sadness, uh, disappointment, disillusionment. A whole range of feelings will come up. And step four is what we do next. 
those emotions will trigger a set of default behaviors. Now, what does that even mean? I'm going to come back to that in a second, but I want to run through these four steps with you just quickly again, because what most of us do is we have step one occur, we experience something, and then we jump as humans straight to step four. And we're not even aware that step two and step three happened. We know it as I'm speaking it to you now because I'm slowing it down and bringing conscious awareness to it. But in the moment of life where we're just, you know, something's happening, something's happening, I'm experiencing something. And this is a million times a day, right? That we're having experiences. Why? Because that's what we're here to do as human beings. We're here to experience life. We're here to have experiences. Why are we here to have experiences? So that we can expand and grow. We are part of, a, of an expanding universe. We're here to expand and grow. How do we have that happen? By having experiences that challenge us, that, that, that cause, are the causation of, our, of us expanding and growing. But here's the thing about humans. <laughs> humans, for whatever reason, think that we are these um, creatures that can control everything. We think we're in control of our own expansion. And this is where and why we tell ourselves stories and have emotions come up around the stories. But it's also why we don't want to feel into those emotions because they're not pleasant, right? They're not comfortable. They're uncomfortable. Now, where does your subconscious pattern come into all this? Well, where that comes in is at some point when you're a kid, somewhere between five and seven years of age, maybe earlier, you will have begun to have, uh, begun to experience and have awareness of the experience of the process of being human. You know, up until sort of five-ish, we don't have that awareness of the experiences. We are just so in tune with who we are and what we're here to be that we just vibe along with it, right? We don't, we don't make up stories. We don't tell ourselves anything about the experiences. I just ate a, I ate a cookie. Yum. It tasted great. I now want to run on the run and play in the playground. Yeah, this is fun. I want to build Lego. Great. So cool. I want to now sleep. Great. I want to now I'm now I'm hungry. Great. Um, we're going to the playground today when we're now going here. We don't make stuff up until we get to around five, five to seven years of age. And then what happens is we make up stories about our experiences. And we make up these stories based on something felt good or it didn't feel good. Now, I'm, I'm really giving you the nutshell version of this. There's, there's a lot more to this process. However, when you have that experience and if you if i took you all back and as i said that's for another training but if we went back and had to think about something that happened if in and around when you're that age you will have done this as well now for me when i was five i won this citizenship award which i had no idea about or why i was receiving it but it felt good so the story that I made up around, that, around winning that award was that winning feels good because I got lots of love and attention from my parents for that and everyone else in the town and in my family. And that felt good. But there's always, you know, for, for every, you know, front of the hand, there's a back of the hand as well. So there was always the, what, what also became part of my story was that if I didn't win, if I didn't achieve, that I wouldn't. It wouldn't feel good. I wouldn't be loved and that wouldn't feel good. So now I have a story, right? Now this is just one story. Generally we have, we create more than that. 
So now as I grow and become an adult and start to move through life, those stories are created by that pattern so that I then don't feel what it's like to not win, not achieve. Those are the, the feelings that I then begin to suppress down. Now, you may be relating to some of this. You may be thinking about, you know, some patterns of your own. Some of the other patterns that I've recognized are patterns of peacekeeping. You know, we, we don't like to be around conflict. We have a story around that. I have to keep the peace, otherwise everyone's going to get mad at me. You know, some of us have um, a martyr pattern you know, a nurturing pattern where, you know, we like to do stuff for people. And if we don't do stuff for people, then they're not going to like you and they're going to get mad at you. They're going to get upset, you know, a people pleaser. Uh, there are patterns around being an entertainer. There are patterns around um, being the star, the star of the show. There are patterns around being uh, the tower of strength. All of these patterns come into existence around when around five and seven, and they become the basis of the story that we tell ourselves. And the story that we tell ourselves is the story that keeps those emotions and feelings suppressed, buried down. And the pattern sits on top of the trap door and will not let you in. So this is why this process that happens step one step two step step three step four you experience something you tell yourself a story about it your story gets get it triggers an emotion brings up an emotion and that those emotions that even the very wisp of that emotional feeling will trigger the default behaviors what are the default behaviors the default behaviors are the things that you do that will make sure you don't feel the feeling so as an achiever I didn't never want to experience the feeling of not winning because that felt like I wasn't being loved or, or, or it felt like I was being um, abandoned or it felt like I was being, you know, cast aside. So my default, uh, the default behaviors of an achiever is to do more, set goals, win, succeed. And those default behaviors click in faster than I can deal uh, get to step two and step three hopefully this is all making sense for you so the process of being human just to recap you experience something you tell yourself a story about it happens in a nanosecond that triggers a feeling or an emotion happens in a nanosecond your pattern kicks into existence into life and says we're not going there we're not feeling that we're not going to and so the pattern triggers your unconscious default behaviors to move you away from the feelings, right? Okay, hope, hope you're hanging in there with me with this. It's, when you do a webinar or a live training, it's me talking to me. So I love interaction, I love questions. So please feel free to be popping up anything that you want to pop up. All right, so what does nature know about this process that we don't? So I think I've got a question there or something popping up when I, I'll stop sharing my screen in a second and I'll check that, but I just want to give you this one piece of um, information, shake it off. So this is what nature knows that we don't know. And this is how nature knows this. So I said at the beginning, the, one of the things that distinguishes humans from the rest of the world, rest of nature and the rest of um, uh, life is that we have free will, right? We have the ability to, uh, to consciously choose. Animals, nature don't have that. They are operating um, intuitively. They just operate from the perspective of, um, uh, you know, they don't get to choose. They don't get to create stories. They don't get to make stuff up. So I'll give you an example. And I learned this um, through Eckhart Tolle. So he, uh, I heard him speak about this. I think it was on an interview. It may even be in his New Earth book. Um, but he told this story and I loved it so much because it made so, 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 so much sense to me. 
and hopefully it'll make some sense to you too. So he was sitting in a park and he observed, um, he was just sitting there on a park bench. And if you know anything about Eckhart Tolle, he, um, although he's world famous now, he took himself through literally what I've taken myself through in the last five years to these days, people call it the, you know, a dark night of the soul. But for me, it was really, and I guess for Eckhart too, it was just um, removing myself from life, if you like, and letting everything that wasn't me fall away so that I could start to see and recognize myself in a much more conscious way. Now, this is what Eckhart was doing when he was sitting on this park bench. For a couple of years, all Eckhart did was sit on a park bench and observe the world around him, nature, and observe his thoughts, right? He literally lived below minimum wage. He tells this story. But it, the story that he tells was this one day he was sitting by a pond on this park bench and he noticed two ducks. And these two ducks swam in. Obviously, there was a territory conflict and they came in at one another. One duck must have infringed on another duck's territory or woman or partner or ducklings or whatever. And these ducks, two ducks, got into this altercation and they're flapping about and there's, you know, feathers and water and everything going everywhere. And it was on for, you know, he said, he says, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, it was just on, they were going for it. Then as quickly as it started, they swam away. They swam off in different directions. Now, it was what happened next that, that is the coolest thing ever. And this is what we don't do as humans. Animals don't have the choice to make up a story about anything. They don't have the capacity to do that. They don't have the free will to label an emotion, make it good, bad, right, wrong, any of that. So as these two ducks swam off, they, uh, Eckhart noticed that they both sat up in the water and started flapping crazily, right? For a good 10 seconds or more, just flapping like crazy, then shook themselves off and then got on with it. Just got on with being in the pond, on the pond together. And he did a little bit of research and did a little bit of um uh, looking into it. And what he came to understand was that this is how animals process their emotions, right? Process. And I'm saying emotions. I don't know if animals have emotions, but you know, when there's any distress or there's an altercation between animals or an animal gets, you know, upset or challenged in some way. And this isn't just ducks. Think about your dog, your cat. If your cat has an experience and it gets startled or scared, it, it shakes itself off, right? This is what animals are doing. Now, they're not, you know, un, you know, uh, like the Taylor Swift song, shake it off, shake it off. What they're doing is they're resetting their central nervous system. When they do that shaking, what they're doing is they're resetting their central nervous system back to neutral. It's what we don't do as humans. And we don't do it because we have free will. We have the choice. And humans are meaning-making machines. And we begin to make stuff mean stuff from around the age of five to seven. Somewhere around there, we begin to have this ability to make stuff mean stuff. And it's the stuff that we make mean stuff that our subconscious pattern keeps us from feeling from forever after. So what does that mean? Well, it means that from generally for most of us from the ages of five to seven through to however old you are now, and I'm um, 54, that's like 50-ish years of stuff that is trapped in my central nervous system, emotions and feelings that, are, that, are, that I've got pushed down that I've never allowed myself to feel. Well, I have, I, I, it's not me, my subconscious pattern, who's there to help you, by the way. You know, the work I do with subconscious patterns isn't to 
uh, erase or eradicate your pattern. It's to cultivate a relationship with your pattern because your pattern is there to serve you, but it's not serving you if it's, if you've decided to hit the autopilot button on your life and let your um, subconscious pattern travel you through life without feeling anything. Now your subconscious pattern thinks it's doing a good thing. It's like, yeah, we're not going to feel that again. That was, that was shit. That was awful. Whatever happened back when you were five to seven. And let me be really clear here, guys, it doesn't have to necessarily be a tragedy or trauma. You know, you, you, you could be in a situation where you wanted a kitten and you, when you were five or seven and you went to dad and said, dad, I want a kitten. And for whatever reason, you might've lived in a flat or an apartment and, and or your dad's allergic to kittens. And your dad said, no, you can't have a kitten. But you might have made that mean, um, dad doesn't want me to have anything good in life. I, I'm not allowed to have anything good in life. I'm not allowed to, you know, or whatever, right? And then what happens from that point on is you start to gather evidence to support that story. That's what we do. We're humans. We're meaning making machines. Now, if that was a duck, the duck would go, what? I can't have a kitten. <laughs> shake that off. Let me just shake, shake that out of my, shake that, that, that emotion out of my central nervous system and reset to neutral. So that's all very good, right? That's all very, very good. I'm just conscious of the time. Let me just flip on to what I've got to show you now. Okay. Um, I'm going to just try and move myself here. Can I do that? Yes, I can. just so that you can see that there. Hopefully you can see all that. So I wanted to give you this uh, chart, this um, something to give you an idea of how this looks and where you sit in all of this. And by you, I mean the truth of you, not your subconscious pattern, not the version of you that you think is you, that has been keeping you safe from feeling your feelings <clears throat> for most of your life. So the truth of you is what, is, is what I call, some people call your soul, some people call you your heart, but the truth of you is a place that has no agenda. It's neutral. It doesn't need an outcome. It's not looking for a result. It's not looking to get or not get anything. It's not looking for good or bad or right or wrong or this or that or yes or no. The only part of you that is seeking those kinds of outcomes are your subconscious pattern that came into existence when you're five to seven to make sure you didn't feel something that felt awful or unpleasant at the time. Now, how do we begin this process? Well, we begin by becoming really practiced at self-observation. How did I begin to become aware of this? I began to really observe myself. I began to keep a journal, keep, you know, umpteen million A5 notebooks. And just, I began to notice my patterns, if you liked. I don't, didn't know they were patterns at the time, but I started to notice what are my default behaviors? What it, when, when this happens, what do I automatically do? When this happens, what do I automatically think? Remember, as humans, we, something happens, we don't do step three and step four. That's gone. The, the subconscious pattern has, has made sure that you don't experience step two and step three and takes you straight to, okay, Oh, there was something there straight to the default behavior. So you never get to um, unpack the story or examine the story. Is this actually true? Or is this something I've made up from an experience I had when I was five or seven? And can I feel into the emotion or the, if, or the feeling that is sitting down underneath that story that I've told myself? Okay. So becoming really practiced in self-observation. How do we do that? Um, I use a bunch of soulful self-inquiry questions. Um, I've created a, a whole 30 day audio program to help you do that, to, to help. And, and they're the questions that I ask myself, but looking within something happens, grab that big old spotlight and turn it here. Ask yourself, 
is the story I'm telling myself here true? Could there be some other version of this story? If I was a director on a movie set and there were five or so cameras set up to capture all the angles of what just happened, if I looked down all those cameras, could I see something different? These are powerful self-observation questions. These are the questions that will begin to get us closer to feeling our feelings, okay? And when we feel, we can heal. These are feelings that we've got, that our subconscious pattern, remember, is sitting on a trap door, keeping trapped down inside of us and making sure we never go there by creating these default behaviors, the things we do. When X happens, I do Y, right? And never going there, right? We can go there. Now, these feelings and emotions, yeah, some of them are uncomfortable, absolutely. But they're perfectly safe. It's safe to feel them. We just never been told that it's okay to feel anything, right? Other than happy or joyful. That's what we say is, you know, what we want to feel. So when we become really practiced in self-observation, we then have an opportunity to self-heal right? When we begin to be able to become masterful at self-healing, which requires us to feel our feelings and emotions, we then get to tap into and live from the, the neutrality of the truth of us. From there is where we can become a very powerful self-leader of your own life. Leadership isn't about getting everything and everyone outside of you to do a certain thing or be a certain way. And it's also not be making sure that you only surround yourself with people that make you feel good. That's a prison, right? That you're building, that you're standing in, holding the key saying, let me out. Okay. So self-observing is the first step. Start to notice, what did I just make that mean? Something happened. I just got upset. This is before we even get to the feelings and emotions. Something happened. I just got upset. What did I just make that mean? Could there be something else going on here? Right? The other, uh, and then from there, you get to begin to notice the emotions that came up around what you just made it mean. This is step two and step three. These are the, the steps that our subconscious pattern jump us away from, right? Take us straight to default behaviors and emotions. This is all happening unconsciously, guys. You know, I'm really slowing this all down for you today. I hope it's making sense because this is a very slowed down version of when things happen. And remember, millions of things are happening every day. We've got stimulus coming at us millions of times in a day. So what are we looking at once we can begin to be powerful self-observers, then we can start to self-heal, and then we get to self-lead from a self-healed version of us that can be the space of neutrality with all of our emotions and feelings felt and released. So the gatekeeper is the subconscious pattern. I've talked about that a little bit today. And as I said, if, if anyone, if you're listening to this or watching this, um, and, and want to know more or want to, you know, 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 you know, I'm not here to sell you anything today. Please know that. I really want to just give you some, some insights into how I've made this practice part of my life and how it has helped me to live so powerfully and peacefully and that my power is my inner peace, Right. That's why I wanted to share it with you. So your subconscious patterns, they're the gatekeeper, right? They are the part of you that if unknown or unchecked or unaware of, is the part of you that you call me, that's not you. I had a pattern in me that, that was an achiever that needed to do things all the time, needed to set goals, needed to win, needed to succeed, needed to, you know, be first all the time. Once I became aware of that subconscious pattern and what the default behaviors were of that pattern, I was able to make conscious choices, new conscious choices. Yes, I could still set goals. It's not about not doing the thing that, that, that we've done unconsciously all our life. 
But when you start to become aware of it, you then get to make a conscious choice. Do I actually want to set this goal? Is this moving, moving me towards what I want to do, be and, and um, have in my life? Or is it just a pattern that belongs to a little kid that did that so she'd receive love? makes a big difference as to where we go in life. But your subconscious pattern is the gatekeeper. It sits literally on a trap door. Underneath that, if you can know your subconscious pattern, you have an, an opportunity to access your feelings. Now, your pattern's not gonna wanna go there, but with conscious choice, you can. You can take your pattern by the hand and say, okay, we're going in, we're going in and we're gonna feel these feelings. You can come with me or you can sit here on your own but we're going in. When the truth of you is leading your life, you are leading from a place of ridiculous, crazy power and freedom. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna use those keys. That's what the feelings are. They are the keys to unlock your emotions. What are your emotions? Your emotions are the gateway to the truth of you. When you can feel your emotions, you are releasing stored up pain that is being held in your body. Now, again, for another live training, but, um, uh, and I know uh, uh, some amazing people that work in this field, German New Medicine um, works in this realm all the time. You know, this is what the basis of their work is, is um, from a point of pain. Pain is unexpressed or unfelt or unreleased emotions. How do we get there? We have to interrupt the pattern. We have to interrupt the pattern that's taking us straight from something happened to the default behaviors and help us move through that step two and step three. All right, we have just enough time left, 15 minutes to take you through um, the practice. So this is a practice that I do myself daily, either for five or so minutes, sometimes for just a minute, sometimes for an hour, two hours, three hours, depending on what's coming up for me. But I find if I, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's like exercise, you know, if I walk a kilometer every day, that's going to help me stay, um, uh, you know, it's like building, right? It's compounding. But if I only, you know, in my whole life, I only walk 10 kilometers on one day, then my health either side of that is going to be a little lackluster, right? So doing something every day is going to help keep this process actualizing. And this is why I do it every single day. So I'm going to invite you now, wherever you are, um, and if you don't want to do this practice, that is okay. You, you are free to reject the practice. You're actually free to reject anything I've said today as well. Okay. But I want to invite you to, if you're up for it, join me as I just take you through a little guided practice to help bring you into your body and to help you begin to notice where you may have some feelings or emotions sitting that you haven't noticed. Now we're not doing anything with them. We're not, this is not regression. This is not, this is just purely observational, right? We're just going to be in the observation. So let's start by just, if you feel comfortable to closing your eyes, Make like a duck if you want. Give a little shake, a little shimmy. Just get comfortable wherever you are. And I'm going to invite you to take a big, deep breath in through your nose. Imagine that breath traveling down the front of your throat, the, th the front of your body, the front of your tummy, and down into your belly. Hold that breath there for a second and then just slowly release that breath, slower than you took the breath in. 
and imagine that breath traveling up the back of your body, up curling around your spine, the back of your neck, and then out through your mouth. So let's just do that two or three more times in our own time, breathing in through your nose, down the front of your throat, down the front of your body, fill that belly up, hold it for a second, and then slowly, slowly release that breath, back up your spine, the back of the neck, and out through your mouth. Let's just do one more of those. What this breathing is doing is it's putting you into, taking you out of your sympathetic nervous system and into your parasympathetic nervous system. So it's putting you into a state of relaxation. It's also helping you to become present and aware of your body. Now I'm going to invite you to notice these words, their feelings. And all you're going to do is as I say these feelings, you're just going to become aware of their presence or their non-presence. Can you feel them in your body somewhere? Or are they not there? This is not anything to force. This is you. Imagine being the sky. And these feelings and emotions that I'm going to share with you one by one are like clouds. They're just passing by and you are just noticing them. And as each one comes and each one goes, as it goes, offer it some love. See it, feel it, if it's there to be felt. And then as it leaves, offer it some love. So let's start with some sadness. We're just noticing the cloud of sadness. Is it present? Is it there? Maybe it's not there. Maybe it feels like disappointment. Maybe it feels like regret. Perhaps it's a sense of being dismayed or tearful or disillusioned. Notice those clouds passing through and see them with eyes of love. Notice now anxiety. Notice if there are clouds of anxiety passing through. Maybe it feels like being afraid or confused or stressed perhaps worried, cautious, or even nervous. Notice those clouds, see them with eyes of love, and notice as they pass through. Now we're noticing anger. Perhaps it looks like frustration or just grumpiness. Perhaps it's annoyance, irritation, feeling offended or even defensive. Notice the cloud, notice it passing through, see it with eyes of love. And watch as it disappears. Notice now any hurt, perhaps it's jealousy. Maybe it feels like betrayal or a sense of shock. 
Perhaps it feels like abandonment or isolation. Notice it. Notice the cloud as it's passing through you. See it with eyes of love as it passes. And moves on. Now we're noticing shame. This cloud, we're noticing embarrassment, perhaps loneliness. Perhaps this cloud is, feels a little guilty, a little confused, a little self-conscious or ashamed. Notice the cloud as it passes through. See it with eyes of love. And allow it to pass. I invite you now to take another deep breath in, in through the nose, down deep into your belly. Feel your belly filling up like a balloon and then release that breath and notice it swirling, swirling up your spine, up the back of your neck and out your mouth as you let out a beautiful <sighs> Let's do that one more time, breathing in through the nose down the front of the belly, into your belly, big and full, and releasing anything on the out breath. Up your spine, swirling, swirling, taking anything with it that is ready to be released. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready in your own time, open your eyes and come on back. Oh, okay. How are we? I did notice a few making sense. I've been scared to go there. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. All right, beautiful people. Just to wrap up, are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions around what we just went through? I want to make sure that everybody leaves with um, everything that they need. And of course, if you want to, you know, there was a lot that we packed into one hour. How do we find the pattern like you did? Yes. Um, that's the work I do, Sandy, um, to help people to uncover that. It, it is a bit of, it can be a bit of a process, but um, what I would begin to invite you to do is notice where in what are you what are you comfortable doing in life you know where are you most comfortable if you're in a in any if you're in a group situation for example are you um are you comfortable um do you like to be the one that makes sure everyone is okay do you like to be the one that you know makes a joke here or there do you like to be um you know if you're set, setting something um uh if if in your family are you the organizer you know st uh, i would begin by and this is for everyone the starting point is to begin to notice what role do you play in your life um yeah, the, uh, the Truth of You program that I, uh, the audio program uh, helps you have a little look at this and takes you through it a little bit. 
But um, that's, that is what I would invite you to do as a starting point. Start to notice what is the role that I play in my life? What, what is my, um, you know, how do I keep everything humming along? Right? That's what I would begin to look at. Um, another way of doing it, but, um, but, but I can be a little confusing is to go back and, and think about, you know, think about some memories that you had when you were five. Now these don't have to be traumatic. In fact, they almost always never are. They are everyday things, but it might be a memory that you, I, one of my memories from when I was five that I created a pattern around was, um, was a joke that my brother played that was, you know, I used to tell it as my party joke, but the five-year-old me made it mean something, you know, and um, yeah, it's, it's having a little deep dive into that. Yeah, to, to see what you make it mean, but begin by examining your roles. What are your, you know, what's your go-to in life? Start to notice that, you know, do you, um, you know, just being around conflict, is that something you avoid? Have a look at what do you avoid? Do you avoid um, uh, sitting, doing nothing? Is doing nothing difficult for you? It was terribly difficult for me. You know, I, in fact, it's how I first discovered my pattern. I completed a whole year of crazy achievements. And at the end of the year, I slipped into a depression because I wasn't achieving anything because the thing that I got love from wasn't, wasn't there. The pattern of doing and achieving wasn't there. Now, my thought was, okay, I'll just set another goal. And then I asked myself, who would I be if I didn't set goals? And that was frightening. You know, that, that's a powerful self-inquiry question. Who would I be if I wasn't this? You know, if you really, um, if you are really, if you're the one in your home that does all the, um, you know, if you're the nurturer, if you're the one that, you know, cleans the rooms and picks up all the clothes and, you know, or looks after everyone, who would you be if you weren't that? Does it, does a, you know, it does a feeling come up? If so, likely there's a, a pattern there playing out. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question, Sandy. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. I want to leave you with one quick tool that I share everywhere I go, every chance I get. How do you feel to heal in the moment, right? How do you, when something comes up, an uncomfortable feeling comes up before you go into the default behaviors of not feeling it, I'll just do this. And let me just run through a few things um, that we do so we don't feel. What are, our, what are our default behaviors? Well, they look like distractions, deflections, and denial. Okay? So we distract, we deflect, we deny. How do we do that? Some of us um, will scroll mindlessly on social media. I'll just numb out so I don't feel. Some of us will uh, go to food if you're an emotional eater. Um, just in my group program, my um, signature group program that's just wrapped up for 2020, which is running again in February, 2021, uh, one of the participants um, had an amazing breakthrough with her emotional eating because that was her distraction to not feel her emotions and not be with um, what was coming up in the moment. She was going from step one, something happened to step four, the default behaviors, the distraction of emotional eating. Some other things that we do, you know, is online shopping. Some of us are addicted to exercise. Some of us are, um, you know, um, uh, you know, wine and, and shopping and all sorts of things. You know, there's a myriad of things that we do so we don't feel. So I would encourage you to begin looking at that. Now, the quick acronym I use to help, and I'll leave you with this um, acronym, is how do I, what do I do when something, when I can feel something coming up and I don't know what to do, but I, you know, I, most of us will clean the scum out of the bottom of our fridge 
as opposed to feeling something unpleasant that's in our body, right? So what do we do? We get STILL. I use the acronym STILL. If I, sometimes I just need to read an email headline and something will come up. I'll go, oh, what's that? What is that? Does that ever happen to you guys? Do you know, does, you know, does, when you get a notification on your phone, do you get this, oh, what's that? You know, if somebody, um, uh, you know, when the phone rings and you don't know the number, do you go, oh, what's that? What's that? You know, there's a million opportunities for us to begin to notice our feelings. And this is the starting aspect of this, guys. Nobody ever told me to feel my feelings. Nobody ever told me to notice my feelings. In fact, my parents schooled me to not feel. Don't feel sad. Don't feel angry. Go and do this instead. Now, this is, again, not a judgment on my parents. That's all they knew because that's what their parents taught them. But when I was feeling sad or when I was feeling angry or when I was feeling disappointment, which is what I felt when I didn't win the next thing that came along, I felt bitterness and disappointment. Nobody taught me how to be with that. I was just told, go on, you know, just go for a ride on your bike. You'll feel better. That's the distraction, right? The distraction from feeling. So when you feel something, take a moment with it. Just take a moment with it. Get still. S-T-I-L-L. Still. S is for stop. Just stop. Right? You felt something. Stop. Don't try and make it feel better. Don't try and make it go away. Something is coming up that wants to be felt. So let's just stop for a second. T, take a breath. Why do we take a breath? Taking a deep breath as we just did takes you out of that fight or flight and puts you into a more grounded place, right? Into your parasympathetic nervous system. You're, you're calming. We want to take a breath so that we, you know, don't go straight to the, the distraction. We stay here. Stop, take a breath. I instill is go inward. Go in. Go within and start to, just like we did in the practice, notice what's wanting to come up. Notice the clouds that are wanting to pass. What is the feeling inside that cloud, right? Can we just feel it? Where the sky, these are just white fluffy clouds that have something in there for us to see. Can we bring some love to it? Can we just presence the feeling, right? The L is to listen, listen to the feeling. I say listen, which is a little counterintuitive, but the feeling is trying to tell us or show us or communicate something to us. Not to fix, not to make better, but just it's, can you see me? Can you see that this is here? So listen to the feeling. It's there because it wants you, it wants to be seen and heard. And then the final L is once you've been able to go within, stop, take a breath, go within, listen to the feeling, give it some love, offer it some love, see it, you'll notice that a sense of peace will start to flood your body. You'll, even if it's just a small amount, this is a practice, guys, you know, even if at first you're at a 10 and then just by spending a couple of minutes noticing what is the emotion or the, the feeling here that's with me? You'll notice that it will start to just, you know, might slip back to a seven, right? And the next time it comes up, do the process again. Notice it go back, you know, maybe it slips back to a five now in your body. It's wanting to be released, but we have to notice it. We have to notice it and not let our subconscious patterns hijack us into those default behaviors of, oh, I'm just going to do something. I'll just do this and then I'll feel better. I'll just do that. Then I'll feel better. That's just trap dooring the emotion. We need to make like a duck. It's there. Let's feel it while it's there with us in the moment and allow it to release. Mm. Okie dokie. All right. We're eight minutes over. So I really wanted to make sure that we, um, 
that we did finish up on time. Does anyone have any other questions? Now, if you want to reach out to me, um, you should all have my email, but if not, you can reach out to me at hello at jenniferforster.com. You can find me in the, the Feel to Heal group. If you're in the Feel to Heal group, you can find me in the Powerfully Peaceful Women group. If you're in that group, you're so welcome, Sandy and, Di and Diane and Lisa. Thank you for being here with me. Please, yes, if you have any questions, reach out. I have packed a lot into this hour. Um, but if I can have you leave with one thing, it is to begin to notice, begin to examine the feelings, begin to just presence them, right? Even if you don't know what to do with them, just go, oh, I just felt something. That's the, the perfect starting point with this. Notice, even if it's on reflection, oh, I just felt this, but look, I just automatically went to that. Begin to notice that as well. What is the starting point? Self observation. Start to pay attention to yourself and your behaviors. Start to notice what do I always do? Start to notice what am I, you know, what's my go to? Yeah, yeah. And reach out. I'm so here for you. So here for you. Um, I do have, if anyone is interested, I do have a Christmas. Um, a Christmas package, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, like a Christmas stocking. Um, and it has the Truth of You 30 day audio program in there, along with four, four part video trainings on self love, on emotional awareness, on um, mastering mindfulness. Each one of these trainings is an hour long. So there's four, four hour trainings and that whole 30 day Truth of You program. So if anyone's interested in that, um, it's it's ninety seven dollars, and you get the whole lot. It's unlimited access. You get your own little log on. It's in a little portal. But if you want to know more about that, please just reach out. Reach out to me. Um, I'm an open book, as you all know. I'm always available to help you. Feel to heal. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. I do see you. I do appreciate you. And yeah, keep noticing. Keep asking those questions. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. See you all somewhere. <laughs>